ever seen an electric scooter promising 40 miles of range and thought, wow, that'll last me all week. But only to find out that it barely makes it across town at full speed. Well, you're not alone. In this video, we're going to break down what advertised scooter range actually means, why real world results often fall short, and most importantly, how to choose the right range for your riding habits. Let's get this out of the way. Advertised range is almost never what you'll get in real life. That up to 40 miles number on the box, well, it's often measured with a 130 pound rider on flat terrain in warm weather, riding at 50 miles per hour in eco mode with no stops, basically a lab test. In reality, however, most people ride faster, way more, face hills, stop and start consistently. That's why real world range is often 30 to 50% lower than advertised. So if you see 40 miles listed on the box, it's safe to assume you'll more likely get 24 to 28 miles under the right conditions. So what really determines how far you'll go? Let's break it down. These are the five biggest factors that affect battery consumption in real world riding. Number one, speed. Speed is the single biggest killer of range, not because the motor can't handle it, but because of how wind resistance works. Air drag increases with the square of your speed and power demand increases even faster. For example, if you cruise at 25 miles per hour, your scooter might consume around 14 watt hours per mile, but bump that up to 35 miles per hour and your consumption will go up to 20, 22 watt hours per mile. So that slight 10 mile per hour increase is justifying a 50% increase in energy consumption. That means riding fast might get you there quicker, but your battery will drain dramatically faster. Slowing down just a little, even by five miles per hour, can add miles to your ride. Number two, rider weight. Rider weight makes a massive difference, especially on smaller scooters with motors under 1000 watts. Think of it like this. Most scooters are designed and tested with a 150 pound rider. If you weigh 200 pounds or more, you're asking the motor and battery to move an extra 25 to 30% off load. And that extra load shows up in your battery usage. Heavier riders may notice that acceleration feels slightly slower. Hill climbs are tougher and range estimates drop by up to 20% or more. Some manufacturers now list performance by weight class. If they don't, it's smart to budget in some cushion. Number three, terrain. Flat terrain is ideal, but once you introduce elevation, everything changes. Climbing even small hills increases your power draw dramatically. A 5% grade over half a mile could take up to 10% of your battery on its own. And if you're doing frequent climbs, like in San Francisco, Vancouver, or Lisbon, expect your range to shrink fast. Worse, most of the energy used going uphill isn't fully recovered on the way down. Yes, regenerative braking gives you some energy back, but not nearly enough to offset the climb. So if your route has hills, Look for scooters with more watt hours than you think you need and expect to recharge more often. Number four, stop and go riding. If you're in the city, this one matters more than you think. Every time you stop and start at lights, at intersections or in traffic, you're burning more energy than cruising. Acceleration draws high current from the battery, especially from a standstill. Do that 10, 20, 30 times in a short ride and your efficiency gets killed. In real testing, rides with constant stop and go conditions can see a 15 to 25% lower range compared to steady, uninterrupted cruising at the same average speed. To offset this, use features like cruise control when possible and enable kick to start mode. Giving your scooter that small manual push before the motor kicks in can help reduce power spikes. Number five, temperature. Batteries are temperature sensitive. Lithium ion cells perform best between 15 and 25 degrees Celsius. It's about 60 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Below that, internal resistance goes up and usable capacity drops. At 5 degrees Celsius, which is 41 degrees Fahrenheit, you can expect range to fall by 15 to 25 percent. Below freezing, performance may drop even further and the scooter might even limit power output to protect the battery. And it's not just about distance either. Cold batteries also take longer to recharge and degrade faster over time if repeatedly exposed to harsh temperatures. So if you ride in the cold, start with a scooter that has more range than you need and store it indoors whenever possible. Here is the number you should be looking at when comparing scooters, watt hours or WH. That is the one true indicator of battery size and the best predictor of range. A 500 watt hour battery might get you 12 to 15 miles. A 1000 watt hour battery might get you 25 to 30 miles. But remember, two scooters with the same battery capacity can still perform very differently depending on motor size, controller tuning, the tire type and total weight. Always treat range estimates as best case scenarios and base your expectations on actual riding conditions. Most people overestimate how far they'll ride, but based on ride data from major manufacturers, the average scooter ride 
is under eight miles round trip. Even heavy users rarely go more than 50 miles in a single ride. So here is a quick rule of thumb. If your commute is under five miles each way, look for scooters that are 500 to 700 watt hours. If you do medium rides or ride faster, aim for 800 to 1000 watt hours. Finally, if you're going long distance, or want performance, go 1200 watt hours or more. And always add 30% buffer between the listed range and what you'll actually get. That gives you wiggle room for hills, stops, and headwinds and definitely helps avoid range anxiety. Before you buy, here is what to keep in mind. Don't buy range you don't need. Bigger batteries cost more and make scooters heavier. If you're riding five miles a day, you probably don't need a 40 mile scooter. Prioritize battery capacity over top speed. You can always ride slower to save range, but you can't add watt hours once the battery runs out. Look for real world test results. Reviews from YouTubers or data from experienced riders are way more helpful than spec sheets. And finally, know your riding habits. If you ride fast uphill or or in cooler weather, adjust your expectations. Scooter range is not a lie, but it's rarely the full truth either. So if you want to find a scooter that truly fits your life, start by asking, how far do I ride and how fast do I want to go? If you're still unsure, drop us your riding habits in the comments and we'll help you figure it out. And if you like this kind of content, subscribe for more buyer-friendly breakdowns. No fluff, just facts. Thank you for watching.